culture is actually being good. We look at like Quick to oh. Drake, he dropped it. Hail to the Deadskins. You already know the sort of game will play out. This time around, it comes with a strong defensive performance. Something worthy of praise for limiting the damage from a potent offense and its highly accurate Kirk Cousins. Well, it would be if their offense could do anything. Even for a game that shouldn't have been close, Washington had a chance. That's the only good thing they could say. The rest was frustration after frustration. An inability to do anything in the red zone killed them, and when things couldn't be more aggravating, Case Keenum suffered a concussion. Dwayne Haskins, you're the poor bastard to fall on the sword today. Enjoy dying. That's all about Minnesota needs to go 6-2. I can't wait to see how you'll ruin Haskins in the near future. It's the only thing I look forward to from this shithole team. The Redskins aren't going to stop failing at the basic tenets of football. Trent Williams has been AWOL from the team due to how shit of an organization they are. Even then, the hope was that he would be traded. The Redskins, in typical fashion, demanded a premium piece back in return. Yeah, no. It's at this point that Williams doesn't have a choice. He reports back to the devil. We can only hope you're free from this hell soon. No one deserves this. Across the pond in the opulence of Wembley Stadium, a disgrace to football is on the pitch. Surprisingly, this is not the English football team. Bungles are bombarding the city with their awfulness. There is only one thing that can stop them. Being competent. Despite their masquerading as a professional football team, you too can defeat them just by not sucking. The Rams did it pretty well, but then again a corpse of Paul Brown could. Cooper Cup would do the rest. Onward to your inadvertent destiny, Bungles. Andy Dalton, get the fuck out. We're building a tank that'll make the Dolphins piss themselves. Akeem Tlaib, congratulations! You get a one-way ticket all the way to Miami! <laughs> Can still exist? Can't we just delete them for all of the failure they've delivered to their fan base? It's gotten so bad that they're starting Matt Schaub at quarterback. Most of the civilized world thought he had retired half a decade ago. Schaub himself did well, chucking the ball for over 400 yards. Sadly, Atlanta could clone him 11 times and play him on defense. He couldn't do much worse under Dan Quinn's scheme. The Falcons were so laughable today that the Seahawks went AFK for the entire second half and they still managed to win the game. Wake me when Dan Quinn and all the spineless fucks in the front office get fired and then I'll give more of a fuck about them. In that case, end of the year. Hopefully. I've just received an important message. Oh dear. Jimmy, fetch me the gun. I'm sorry, Matt. There are those of you that may have forgotten the Saints had a quarterback issue when Drew Brees was injured. With how they've played as a team, easy to forget. Don't worry now, because he's back. It took him a little time to get back up to speed, but the offense was humming along just fine once they got back into form. An easy opponent with a paper-soft defense like the Cardinals are good practice. The defense even did their part by not allowing a touchdown to them. Perhaps all the laughing at them has fueled their fire. Maybe being fucked over by the officials has sent them hellbent on war against the league. Or I could just be overreacting on one game. I wish Sam Darnold would see more than ghosts when reading NFL defenses. If that were the case, he'd be able to properly assess them and not turn into a pumpkin. You don't have to guess because it's the Jets every damn week. You give them a dollar and they'll turn it over to the bottom of a well. They will come back five minutes later and demand another dollar. Even for a team with huge question marks like Jacksonville, the butt fumble were easy prey for guys like Gardner Minshew. The defense has never recovered from C.J. Mosley being out, and the offense just hasn't gotten started. Keep going, Jets Mosley isn't going to be playing for a while longer. It's at this point where I wonder if Adam Gase is going to survive the year. He was a maligned hire in the beginning, and he's learned nothing from his fuck-ups in Miami. The Kalechi Osemele saga, anyone? It sounds like a Jets thing to do. Take Leonard Williams, the once-hyped defensive prospect, now free to go to a contender in the... Giants! Why the hell would they rent Williams for? The Eagles are a total mess. Orlando Skandrick got cut for being terrible and has decided to burn every bridge possible. What he did wasn't just piss on the situation, he poured gasoline on it and lit a match to start a five-alarm blaze. The shit show has commenced in Philadelphia. You would think this would create a rift in the locker room and crush their ambitions, but how do they respond? Merely by walking into Buffalo and pummeling the ball down their throats. That respectable defense was minced and sautéed on an open field by the running game. But that terrible legal secondary, you say? They'll get burned! Josh Allen is starting a QB, you're safe there. 
If you can stop his feet, he can't do much. The season for Philly has gone from total disaster to unbridled hope in 24 hours. Gotta love knee-jerk feelings. This game was more of an air show than the hype would let on. Despite last year's botching, the Lions have allowed Matthew Stafford to sling the ball around to much success. Daniel Jones has shown flashes of potential in a few games he's played. The skies were consistently covered with missiles to receivers for three hours, both quarterbacks throwing for over 300 yards. It's more of a testament to how bad these defenses are, and it will have to come down to who fucks up less. Fortunately for Detroit, they are the ones that managed to pull off a win that shouldn't have been close. You can thank the Giants and their confusing play calling in key situations on both sides of the ball. Lions, your reward for this win is potentially trading away big play slay. Wait, that's supposed to be a reward? Denver has a chance at a much-needed victory to fuel their false ambitions of a playoff berth. It's not anything they're doing, that's why. It's because of the Colts' own mishaps. Poor Adam Vinatieri. Missing field goals and extra points with alarming regularity this season. I hate to say it, but it may be time to take him out back too. Jimmy, reload the gun. Despite all this in the alleged playing down to competition, Indianapolis has a shot at redemption. One outstanding play by Dwayne Haskins near his goal line and further marching, Vinatieri will need to come up clutch. Be ready to fire, Jimmy. The veteran Vinatieri sweeps the leg, 51 yards away! The Colts take the lead! He pulled through. Good. Put the gun away, Jimmy. You won't have to shoot him today. But keep it loaded. I don't know if we'll have to do it soon. Joe Flacco bitching about team effort when he can't quarterback efficiently anymore. We'll see about that. How about you enjoy this injury and deal with it? Don't make me take you out back as well, Joe. Same situation as last week for the Titans. A crucial game for their season against another team that's desperately looking for the same thing. Tampa Bay is hoping that whatever kinks were in their system had been erased due to a well-timed bye week. This apparently can't be done easily. Famous Jameis decided to do his typical networking routine of giving away key turnovers interspersed with aiding his team. Ryan Tannehill, though, flashed the ability that had Miami hang on to him for three years too long. Three touchdowns will turn anyone into the Dolphins' front office. As expected, this game would be neck and neck for the majority of the game. A key play would be needed to break it open. Yes, Tennessee could settle for a Cody Parkey upright, but why not fake it with a no-conceived play call that was fortunately called dead early? Yes, Ref Ball makes its ugly appearance as this technically was a fumble and should have been six points for the box. Instead of this, Tampa Bay must rely on Famous Jameis. You know how well that usually turns out. At least it was delicious. Oh boy. Two teams that are circling the drains in different ways fighting for the right to survive. To think that these squads, who met great expectations, are struggling at this point of the season is a surprise to me personally. I figured that the Chargers would have had both better scheming and offensive line play. For the Bears, I just thought they'd have some pulse on offense. It's pretty manger. Mitch Trubisky just doesn't have it. It's migraine-inducing when Matt Nagy neglects the potent running game to force feed Trubisky opportunities to pad his stats. Even then, he fails. The Bears had five red zone opportunities and only one of them ended up as a touchdown. Unsurprisingly, that was a rushing play. That is a recipe for embarrassment at home. They should be fortunate that the Chargers were just as awful on the offensive front to keep Chicago in the game. Despite the awful performances by both squads, only one point separated either of them from a win. It's at times like these where one team will stumble into such bullshit. Mitch Trubisky decided the time was now to fool people into thinking he was competent to put the onus on Eddie Pinheiro. On his first try, he gave Bears fans a wonderful taste of Parky. Uprights. Since he likes reliving trauma, Matt Nagy called for a fucking knee with timeouts and 40 seconds left. What will this kick reveal? Snap, hold, kick is wide left! The boogeyman lives on in your nightmares. May Cody Parkey haunt your wasted defense for eternity. No defending of that awful decision is going to give you closure, Matt. Stop trying. You aren't getting out of this either, Chargers. Ken Wisenhunt was sacked in an effort to give the offense life. Might need more than that to survive against yours. There may be two or three people that still doubt the might of the Niners. How foolish would they be to even think of such heresy? Bring out the next poor sap to get destroyed on their field. Carolina, you have been found guilty of standing in the way of Santa Clara arrogance. The punishment is having everything you've ever held dear being desecrated and defiled in front of you. You liked Kyle Allen's upside? Watch him become so pathetic and weak you'll be begging for Cam Newton. Thank you for being humiliated by our Nick Bosa. Stop by quickly next time to get your asses kicked some more. Does everyone remember when we thought Cleveland had a chance to be a good football team? 
We should have been far more pessimistic. There was a reason why I thought there were Boomer Bust in its incomplete display every week. Once again, a total lack of discipline, constantly repeated mistakes like false starts and drop passes and god-awful coaching and game planning. I'm honestly more perplexed to see how Freddy Kitchens one-ups himself in the buffoonery department. It's the baffling coach's challenges. Why is he challenging stuff that even common schmucks like myself see as a penalty? Why are you taking a delay of game penalty to go for it on a 4th and 16? What the hell are you thinking, man? That god-awful first quarter was enough to bring you a loss and it just kept getting worse. Thank god you have an easy schedule coming up, but 2-5 and five is disappointing as hell. On the greener side of the grass, Belichick gets his 300th win with an incredibly soft schedule to go to 8-0. Celebrate this accomplishment by trading the cancer of Michael Bennett to the Cowboys and cutting Josh Gordon. Good times were had by all. You'd think that this kind of game would have less on the line for both teams, but Oakland is desperate to recover their winning ways. Last week's smacking against the Packers has them hungry for a game to steal. By God, they would do their best to do so against the Texans. Derek Carr wanted redemption for last week's faux pas, and he got it with a strong showing. Both teams constantly trading blows, seeking confirmation of January aspirations. With the clock ticking down in the fourth quarter, Oakland had the lead, but could they keep it? A certain Houston QB would answer that question. Watson. And he goes down, no, he stays on his feet, throws on the run, touchdown! Unbelievable! Deshaun Watson is a living god. May we bow to his incredible skill. Getting kicked in the eye and still throwing an accurate ball. Hate to say it, Oakland, but you got beat by another outstanding individual effort. The lack of a true game changer might be their downfall. If only AB wasn't such a cancer, eh? Houston, hold up a second. Is that J.J. Watt I'm hearing trapped in a well? No, that's just yet another season-ending injury for him. What can I say? You should have gotten Lassie to save him. This would have been a really good game if Mahomes were played. Logic won the day as he was wisely told to rest his kneecap in favor of Matt Moore. For Kansas City, games like this require perfection to win. Every mistake will be magnified when there isn't raw talent to get you out of bad situations. Several woes will be the cause of the Chiefs' demise in this Sunday night affair. Defensive lapses. Aaron Jones made your team schematics look like fools. When will coordinators learn not to put a linebacker on man coverage against a faster running back? It rarely ends well. The next issue, LaShawn McCoy. I love the man. Much respect to a pet alum, but the way he carries the ball? It's just begging to be stripped. It was. And it killed their momentum in the end. The Chiefs lose a heartbreaker, even though the damage to their season long term will be minimal. How good is Green Bay, though? Are they legit? Or am I right to still have lingering doubt? Let's see, a team notorious for playing down to their competition going toe-to-toe -to -toe against one of the most blatant hatchet jobs in recent memory. Kenyon Drake, good news, you're free from the tank. You get to go to another awful team in Arizona. I never said the situation was going to be better, Kenyon. Back to the game at hand, though. The Steelers did what the Steelers usually do in these scenarios. They played down to their competition. The first half was a scene played out over many years. The offense can't move the ball, the defense is exhausted, and Miami has a 14-point lead in the first quarter. I'm honestly not surprised. The fans were booing the offense calls for Duck Hodges flew in the air. The tank was being ruined. The scene was miserable. It's at this point where the football gods intervene. They want their incredible tank bowl matchup to align in the stars. Pittsburgh gets its act together, and Miami does everything in their power to suck the life out of their own team. An all-out blitz on a third and long. How the hell did you expect that one to go, boys? Miami ended up becoming victims to their own lack of talent. The tank rolls on. An ugly, ugly victory for Pittsburgh and would have gotten their asses handed to them by a real team. Nonetheless, false hope fills the city's air. I don't blame them for it. The gods always demand sacrifice. Let us lament those we have lost this week. Unit lost. Unit lost. May the fallen be blessed in the football afterlife. Amen. 78 yards for Garoppolo, two touchdowns and an interception. Mostert with a break through the play, and Mostert's going to sail into the end zone for another 49er touchdown. And the beat goes on here in Santa Clara. 41 yards for Mostert.